France's national rail operator, SNCF, has always been a monopoly with very minimal competition, particularly on its high-speed routes, with services provided by other operators either being part-owned or operated in partnership with SNCF. This changed in December 2021, when the Italian state rail operator, Trenitalia, launched services on the Paris to Lyon to Milan corridor under the Frecciarossa brand, using their flagship train, the Frecciarossa 1000. In this video, I'll be in executive class for the seven hour trip to Milan via the gorgeous French Alps, which is supposedly Europe's best high speed train experience. So let's get this show on the rails. Bonjour à tous. Paris Gare de Lyon station in the early hours of the morning is where today's journey begins. This is the second busiest station in France after Paris Nord and handles circa 150 million passengers a year. The station dates back to August 1849, although the current station building dates back to 1900 and as with the other five main termini in the French capital, features a spectacular architectural design both inside and out. As we enter, we can see that preparation works are currently underway at the entrance for Gare de Lyon's 2024 refurbishment, which even includes changes to the station exterior and the installation of a shopping centre, amongst other changes. The size and complexity of Gare de Lyon means that the station is categorised by different halls, ranging from 1 to 3. As our train today is departing from Hall 1, our focus will be primarily here. Hall 1 contains the original train shed, which dates back to the 1900s. Doesn't it look stunning? The station is a principal hub for national and international TGV services to places such as Marseille, Barcelona and, as the name suggests, Lyon. Naturally, this means there are great onward connections with the Paris Metro and RER. And there's not just historical architecture to be admired. This rather unique graffiti is located next to the right end platform and was completed by Artis Brusque in October 2016 under commission by SNCF, the French state rail operator. Just next to this is one of many shops available to prepare you for your onward journey. However, executive class has me sorted on that front, but more on that later. And just next to this is the Trenitalia booking office, which isn't open until 7am Central European time. And this brings us nicely into the subject of our video today, Frecciarossa. In front of us is an ETR 400, or better known as the Frecciarossa 1000, the Italian flagship train. This particular set is one of 50 of the 2013 to 2017 built series, built by Hitachi, formerly Ansaldo Breda, and Bombardier. The trains are capable of doing a whopping 400 kilometers per hour, although we're restricted to 300 km per hour in regular passenger service. Trenitalia launched services on the Paris to Lyon route in December 2021, following extensive testing, with two services a day extending to Milan via the Alps. These services directly compete with SNCF on one of its busiest high-speed routes. And compete they certainly do. The crowds were very large as I attempted to enter the ticket gates, which shows the commercial viability of Trenitalia's relatively new service. Trenitalia either gives you the option of printing off your ticket or using it as an e-ticket, of which I chose to do the latter. A second ticket check is then done by a Trenitalia member of staff to ensure you're boarding the right service, which indeed we are because in front of us is the Frecciarossa 1000. On the side of the train, we can see that the ETR 400 is capable of operation in Italy and now France, with five more spaces available. The Frecciarossa 1000 was designed with the aim of Trenitalia entering further European markets, as it did recently in Spain with its consortium, Irio. But that's a subject for another video. For now, let's get on board our train and have a look around. Upon boarding the train, we find ourselves in one of four standard class carriages. And after fighting my way through the crowds, we can see that seating arrangement is in a 2x2 two two configuration, featuring both airline style and table seats.
We are now in comfort class, which makes up one carriage of the train and is more or less the same as standard, and is available for a few extra euros. Instead, here you have leather seating and receive a free soft drink. However, I do find this to be a false economy, especially as the welcome drink is strangely not available on the Paris to Milan route for some reason. Hold on. The middle of the Frecciolosa 1000 contains a buffet car and we can see the attendants preparing the meals. But again, more on that later. There is also an accessible toilet to the left as we approach the first business class carriage. This is one of two first class offerings on Frecciolosa and is the consist of two carriages on the train. Seating is in a two by one configuration, as with most first class services on high speed services these days. And finally, here's where we'll be sitting, the most premium of the four classes of travel offered on board the Frecciarossa, one of 10 seats in executive class. I'll dive into this in further detail as the trip goes on, but for now, let's go through our route for today. Our route today out of Paris sees us head towards southeastern France via the LGV Sud-Est, as far as Lyon, France's third largest city. We then move on to climb the French Alps to Chambéry and eventually ascending towards Modan, our highest point in the Alps. We then cross over to Italy via the Fréjus Tunnel to stop at Bardonecce and Turin before arriving at our final stop of Milano Centrale at around 2pm this afternoon. This is going to be an incredible journey and I'm so glad you're joining me for it. So sit back and enjoy the ride. We depart Paris Gare de Lyon right on time. Shortly after leaving Gare de Lyon, our attendant comes in and provides us with a Frecciarossa branded water and a face cloth. And as with everything in executive class, this is 100% complimentary. In the background, as we continue to depart Gare de Lyon, Bercy station can just about be made out. Acting as a relief for Gare de Lyon, this is the least served of Paris's seven mainline termini, seeing around 4 million passengers a year. As it's still relatively dark, let's begin to check out the train. As to be expected, the seat is amazingly comfortable, although I wouldn't say it's the comfiest I've sat on, surprisingly. This is, however, made up for by the incredible legroom, just look at all that space. Absolutely amazing. As is standard with most train seats nowadays, particularly a first class product, power and USB sockets are located right to the side of the seat. This is on the right armrest. The armrests aren't foldable, but do contain rather unique and amazing features. A foldable table is located on the armrest to the left, which is a double edged sword. Whilst it is nice to have the option to pull out a table, this does in a way trap you when you need to move around the train. The armrest to the right is where the controls are to adjust the seat to your preference and the footrest control, in my opinion, was by far the coolest. That being said, there were software issues at my seat and the one adjacent to mine, so this had to be done on a different seat. Rest assured though, the rest of the controls were working perfectly fine, meaning I could adjust the lighting and recline my seat as I felt the need. Honestly, this felt like an airline's business class. Who would have thought you could experience this on a train? Huge kudos to Trenitalia for this. A small storage space for bags, coats and other items is located beneath the power sockets. You know, when bypassing my messy wiring arrangement. Although there is also an overhead luggage rack accompanied with coat hangers should you run out of space. Something that I think is incredible about this trade is that there is a full-blown meeting room on board for people to have meetings and also to do work. This is bookable via the Frecciarossa website. The HDMI monitor also appears to be linked to the passenger information system. There's also a window blind for blocking out the sun, as well as if you just want to get some sleep. Everything with this train seems perfect, right? 
Well, the major deal breaker is the vinyl wrap which Trenitalia placed on the ETR 400 trains dedicated to the Paris to Lyon to Milan route. It looks amazing on the outside, however it completely spoils the view from one standard class carriage and yep, you guessed it, the only executive class carriage from the inside, both located on the driving ends. Who needs a window blind with this on, right? As can be seen here, this did mean that quite a few of the shots I took were unusable for the video. To resolve this, I had to hop in and out of carriages throughout the journey to get the shots that I did of this amazing trip, particularly those of the ascent of the Alps. You see the things I do for you guys? On that note, I'd like to remind you that liking and subscribing to me is free of charge and is a great way to support me and my videos. I do upload videos every week, so please do consider subscribing as well as enabling notifications. Thanks! That being said, there were moments where this backfired, mainly owing to the foggy French morning along the LGV Sud-Est towards Lyon. Nevertheless, we can still enjoy the speed capabilities of the Frecciarossa 1000, heading down the LGV close to a healthy speed of 300 km per hour, as shown by the display screens on the train. It's now time for breakfast in executive class, and like I mentioned previously, Everything is 100% complimentary, so don't hold back when you're ordering food. This is the Christmas menu, and the food is prepared by Italian chef Carlo Cracco. To view the menu in full, please do check out the description where I've posted a link. I must admit that I'm not a very big eater when it comes to breakfast, so this filled me up rather nicely, and was very delicious, I must add. All this whilst travelling at 300 km per hour. C'est parfait! This is Lyon Padieu, our first stop just under two hours after leaving Paris. The principal station in France's third largest city, the literal translation in English, despite how it sounds, means Lyon, property of God, and has gradually replaced Lyon Pirache as the city's main station over the years. The other services of Trenitalia out of Paris that don't serve Milan terminate at the latter, again emphasizing the competition with SNCF on one of its busiest corridors. Speaking of which, we can see a TGV Inouï duplex set as we arrive into the station, one of many that call here as part of their daily duties. Our departure from Lyon Pâtes-Dieu means we'll soon start to make our ascent up the French Alps, so before we witness this incredible part of the trip, let's check out the toilets. I'll be going for the standard toilet in my carriage, which, unsurprisingly for such a high-tech train, has automatic doors. Right, door locked, and we can begin. Naturally, the toilet is very clean, being the first service of the day, although past experiences with Trenitalia generally show me this is the standard on the Frecciarossa service. The soap is very well stocked. The tap works well, as can be seen. And finally, the hand dryer works well as it should, meaning overall I'm going to give the Frecciarossa 1000 standard toilet a huge thumbs up. Right, with that, it's now time to head back to our seat and start our ascension up the Alps. We now begin the three hour trip across the French Alps. Our Frecciarossa 1000 will reach its highest point of 1057 meters or 3280 feet at Modan our last stop for the French-Italian border. For now, let's just enjoy the breathtaking scenery as we make our way along the Alps. Sadly no snow, but still a gorgeous sunny day for it. Just look at the Alps in the background, isn't that incredible?
Our approach to Chambellet, Chalaisou, sees us pass a TGV Inui service, whom Trenitalia compete against. Using their TGV Réseau sets as opposed to the TGV Duplex to the right, TGV Inui provides three return journeys a day between Paris and Milan, taking around eight hours each way, whilst Freccia Rossa currently offers two faster services by a full hour, but I'll explain why later on. We've arrived here around five minutes earlier than scheduled, which provides us a whopping 20 minute dwell time, so it's time to get off the train and get some fresh air. The station is the principal station for Chambéry, the largest city in the Auvergne Rhône Alpes region. We can also see a TER X73500 rail car, which is in the fantastic Rhône Alpes livery. This stop also allowed us, of course, for some amazing photo opportunities of our stunning Fertilosa 1000 train, and this is only the beginning. And a relaxing 20 minutes later, we're on the move again to continue our ascent up the French Alps. The portion between Chambéret and Mordain was honestly my favourite part of the trip. The views got more and more spectacular the further we ascended up the Alps, which was honestly an incredible experience. We also pass a number of stations as we continue our ascent, Saint-Pierre d'Albigny being one of them. These stations are particularly popular during the winter months when this was filmed, for tourists visiting the Alps for skiing. Out of all the footage I shot and included in this video, this was undoubtedly one of my favourites. The full view of the Alps in the background, sprinkled with snow on the top of the mountains, is just a sight to behold. I was also amazed as we were passing along the river Ach. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Did you know the line between Modan and Chambéry was electrified with DC third rail between 1925 and 1976? This was subsequently replaced with the 1.5 kilovolt overhead wire system still in use today. I can only imagine how much better, if that's even possible, these amazing views were back then. Just over two and a half hours after leaving Lyon, and beginning our ascent, we have now reached the peak of our journey through the Alps and our last stop in France, Modan. There is a dwell time here of over 10 minutes to allow for a crew change, as well as enable our train to change from the 1.5 kilovolt system used in France to the three kilovolt system that will be used in Italy. So this once again provides an opportunity for me to stretch my legs and take in the astounding views of the Alps in the flesh. Just above us is Fort du Le Platon, a fort dating back to the 1800s built to provide artillery cover on the French end of the Fléjus tunnel which was kindly pointed out to me by the very friendly attendant on my service. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. C'est parfait. <laughs> and of course, when you're at Mordain station, it's the law that you take a photo of your train in front of the Alps. An incredible photo spot. It would have been better though if it was snowing, but you can't have everything in life. Our train is scheduled to depart any minute now, so I best be getting back on board. Before we cross the Italian border though, let's take in one last look at the amazing scenery of the French Alps. After passing through the Fréjus tunnel and the border to Italy, it's now time for lunch. I went for traditional Italian pasta to celebrate this milestone of the trip and included a can of coke. For those who drink alcohol, no need to worry, this is also complimentary. 
But as a reminder, please do view the full menu in the description, which I put a link to, to see the full offerings available. And of course, that was absolutely incredible. Kudos to Trenitalia for this. My one regret, however, was not ordering dessert, but please don't feel hesitant to order more, as, honestly, your attendance will cover your every needs and it's all-inclusive. After finishing lunch, we arrive into our first stop in Italy, Bardoneccia, around 20 minutes later. It's a bit hard to see thanks to the vinyl wrap, but the snow definitely appears to be more prevalent on the Italian side of the Alps compared to the French side on this trip. After leaving Bardoneccia, we descend from the Alps to eventually call at our penultimate stop of Torino Porta Sussa, the second busiest station serving the city of Turin in northern Italy. This is the home stretch for our route to Milano Centrale and is where we begin to gain the time advantage over the TGV services to Milan. Why is this you ask? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the Frecciarossa 1000 is cleared to operate almost anywhere in mainland Europe, meaning that unlike the TGV sets used on the Paris to Milan route, Frecciarossa is able to use the Italian high speed lines, whereas the TGV services provided by SNCF are restricted to the classic lines. This slashes the last leg to Milan to an hour compared to the usual two with the TGV. I do wonder how this journey will change in the 2030s when the Turin to Lyon high speed line eventually opens. What do you think? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The high speed line which we're on right now is the Turin to Milan high speed railway, which was Italy's third high speed line, having opened fully in 2009. As with the LGV Sudest we were on this morning, the line's top speed is 300 km per hour. We're closing in on Milano Centrale, so it's time to summarise. Overall, this has to have been one of my favourite train trips so far. The ride quality and comfort of the Frecciarossa 1000 is superb, and the service provided by Trenitalia, including the helpfulness and politeness of attendants and staff, was amazing. Trenitalia truly are a force to be reckoned with, and SNCF really need to up their game. Much like Trenitalia did with the introduction of Italo, but that's again a subject for a future video. Sorry to harp on about this, but my biggest complaint was the final wrap of the wheel. Maybe they should have kept it on the areas on the windows? Either way, that is something that needs to be resolved, as it spoils the travel experience in my opinion. The software issues affecting the footrest were also a huge downside. However, that's not really Trenitalia's fault. And to be honest, the, the staff were doing what they could to try and resolve the situation. So I can let them off for that one. But anyways, guys, that's it from me for now. And welcome to Milano Centrale. And that's it guys, welcome to Milano Centrale, one of the finest railway stations Europe has to offer. Have you ever travelled with Trenitalia before, or Frecciarossa? What are your experiences with them? Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But anyways guys, I really do hope you've enjoyed the video, and thanks so much for coming along with me on this journey today. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like, as well as share it, as that really does help the channel to grow. If you're new to the channel and want to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing as well as enabling notifications as I now upload new videos every Friday at 5pm. Right, it's time to see what Milan has to offer before a flight back to Paris later this evening. But thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.